Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Spectrum Classes. Today in this video, we are going to discuss about the interaction of radio frequency pulse with net magnetization vector. And the outcome received by their interaction is in the form of free induction decay. Before discuss uh, in this video, we are just having a recap of my previous video. So the net magnetization vector is the sum of the magnetic dipole moment of the nuclei present in the sample. And radio frequency pulse behaves as a static field uh, in the rotating frame of reference. Since these two concepts will be used in this video, therefore, these two videos are very important to watch before watching this video. Let's start with the radio frequency pulse. A pulse is a short burst of radio frequency radiation applied for a very short duration. That is in the range of milliseconds to microseconds and then switched off. Since radio frequency radiation is applied for a very short duration in NMR, therefore we used to call it pulse. Now the important point is that a radio frequency pulse produces a wide band of frequencies with about the same amplitude and all the nuclei lying within the entire chemical shift range can simultaneously excite or tipped by the same angle irrespective of their chemical shifts. So this we are going to discuss in the next slides and one more thing which I bring to your notice about the radio frequency pulse that if um, the radio frequency pulse is applied in the microsecond range then that radio frequency pulse covers the entire chemical shift range of the nuclei present in the sample and that is known as hard pulse and for milliseconds the pulse applied is generally applied to excite a particular type of nuclei and that is called as a uh, soft pulse so let's start with the interaction of radio frequency pulse with net magnetization vector so we will discuss it in both the terms one is quantum mechanical and the other one is classical picture so here this is the quantum mechanical picture for a proton nuclei which have nuclear spin value i is equal to 1 by 2 and by the formula 2i plus 1 it has two energy state one is low energy state corresponding to plus half and the other one is high energy state corresponding to minus half so according to the boltzmann distribution law more number of nuclei are present in the low energy state and the energy difference between these two low and high energy state is represented by say delta e and if a radio frequency pulse of having equivalent energy value uh, only then the nuclei which are present in the low energy state will absorb this rf radiation and they switches to the high energy state and flip down their orientation this can be shown over here one more thing which one must know that if the number of nuclei is present in the low energy state and in the high energy state becomes equal then that situation is known as state of saturation and in that case both the low and high energy nuclei will have equal probability to for the transition and uh, no signal is produced in the receiver coil so that situation needs to be avoided in nmr spectroscopy if we see this picture in a classical manner suppose this is the classical picture here for proton nuclei say two energy states are there this is high energy state and this is low energy state and according to the boltzmann distribution law more number of nuclei are present in the low energy state these uh, here one can see these nuclei are randomly oriented in a cone like structure and this is called their random phase distribution the other thing is that the magnetic moment of these spinning nuclei is collectively represented by this net magnetization vector when a radio frequency pulse is applied in the perpendicular direction to this applied external magnetic field that can be either applied in the x direction or in the y direction what is going to be happen when a 
आर एफ रेडिएशन और आर एफ पॉलिसी अप्लाई टू द सिस्टम टू थिंग्स आर गोइंग टू बी हैपन टू द सिस्टम वन वेन दीज न्यूक्लियाइज आर प्रोसेसिंग विद द सेम फ्रीक्वेंसी एज दैट ऑफ द अप्लाइड एक्सटर्नल मैग्नेटिक ऑसिलेटिंग फील्ड ओनली देन दीज न्यूक्लियाई विल एब्सॉर्ब दिस एनर्जी एंड दे फ्लिप टू द हाई एनर्जी स्टेट दिस कैन बी अंडरस्टूड बाय द एनालॉजी हेयर सो हेयर टू कार्स आर देयर मूविंग विद द सेम स्पीड इन द सेम डायरेक्शन and these drivers are seems to be static with respect to each other and if they want to exchange some object uh, in between they can do that but if this car is moving at slightly higher speed or lower speed then the exchange of the object is not possible between them so th this is the first case which is going to be happen that is absorption of rf pulse and on absorption these nuclei switches to the high energy state the second thing which is going to be happen is these nuclei start processing in a coherent manner so second thing is that so this is partial coherence is there for these nuclei and this can be understood by the analogy when music is on these cats starts dancing in a coherent manner same is the case with the nuclei here i just want to say these all are just the representations now this net magnetization vector in this case will tilt in this direction if we place a receiver coil in the perpendicular direction to the applied external magnetic field and this is static magnetic field say in the y direction if b1 is applied in the x direction or if b1 is applied in the y direction then it will be kept in the x direction this is the receiver coil now when the b1 field is applied this net magnetization vector as we discussed in our previous video rotating frame of reference so this net magnetization vector now starts processing about this b1 field so this is processing about the x axis now that is in the yz plane so here if we apply a radio frequency pulse on 90 degrees then this net magnetization will be like this if we apply this for 180 degrees then the situation will be like this or this system is reversed similarly we are having the situation so if at the moment when b1 field is stopped the net magnetization will be stopped at that position say if this is stopped at 45 degree angle then the receiver coil will receive only the component vector of this net magnetization vector next is if it is stopped at this position then since b1 field is gone now as it is stopped it is gone now and this net magnetization vector will stopped processing in the yz plane since b1 is gone now the only field which it now experience is the applied external magnetic field that is b not field and it since it is experiencing this b not field which is applied about the g direction therefore it will start processing about this g direction now it starts processing in the xy plane so please do not confuse why it is processing in the yz plane and why now it starts processing about this xy plane since here b1 is still on so it is processing about this b not field but here b1 is gone as it is stopped so it starts processing about the applied external magnetic field that is b not field which is applied in the g direction so now it is starts processing in the xy plane so this is very very important concept to understand now when this net magnetization vector starts processing in the xy plane an induction is generated which is received by the receiver coil so this can be shown over here suppose this is my y direction y direction right so at this moment when this b not is stopped 
immediately at that moment it starts processing about this xy plane so it, at this moment the signal received by the receiver coil is maximum which is shown over here like this now it is moving with time at suppose it is at this moment x direction then no signal is received by the receiver coil so zero after this it comes in the minus y direction then the negative res maximum response is received by the receiver coil so we will be at this moment similarly it is go on and on and then we will get this free induction decay response after the interaction of b1 field with the net magnetization vector since here the amplitude of this wave is shown same at every step but this is not the case actually it goes down in an exponential manner and why it is in the exponential manner that we will discuss in the next video in which we will discuss about the relaxation of this net magnetization vector which is in two terms spin spin relaxation and spin lattice relaxation i hope you understand this concept thank you all